Rashida. And we're, we're in the, the beds. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Rashida has an interesting idea, so I'm just rolling with it. So let's go for it. So what we're going to do is just talk about, um, we've got a couple of questions, intimate questions. Um, it's just a little pillow talk, a little couch talk, a little lovey-dovey, uh, cute little time with each other. This I love. <laughs> Um, so we're just trying something here and just going to roll with it. We're going to ask a couple of questions and then get each other's perspective on it. So where did the questions come from? The questions came the they... from the New York Times. Oh, boy. So okay. there are some just, they're couples questions. Okay. So we're just going to talk it out. Okay. All righty then. First question. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Anyone in the world who would want to do it? Actually, that's not hard. That's in the world that they can mythologically or they do not matter. In the world, so, I want to talk to Jesus. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to talk to Jesus. I, you know, I, I would like to understand. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I ain't afraid to talk to Jesus. I talk to him all the time. He just don't sit like this is a manifestation, right? Another sit as in human form right across the table talking. Okay. Oh yeah, I want to talk to Jesus. I want to know what is the what you're thinking, how you're thinking it, why this particular, why these kind of things, why a whole lot of stuff. I know I know the Bible kind of gives us some answers anyway mm -hmm. from things of the past, but I would really be intrigued about um, well, and I'd probably be asking about, I don't know if it's self-serving, my own walk and destiny and making sure okay. I was aligned and that if I wasn't, if he could just give me what, what uh, your, your dad said, Bishop Brown would say, cut across the field, just give me the answers <laughs> so that I can get right. But I think I want to talk to Jesus to understand the oh. grand plan. I mean, we know the grand plan from Revelations, right? But my journey up to that and what he wants me to do, because I would want to fulfill that and then touch as many people as I could in the process. I, I think Jesus would be mine. Who would you, I'm just curious. Who would you talk to? I said uh, Coretta Scott King. Okay. Because I want to know her perspective. You are the 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 backbone of such a phenomenal, great man, and it takes a strong woman to be married to someone who has a call in their life, which is leading a huge change in in history and in life for our people of color. I mean, you to deal with even we've seen some of we've seen all the documentaries about um about his life and about all the things, but you're when she was living it, when he was out uh doing all the speeches, talking and 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 being in the forefront for the civil rights movement, she was home. She was getting phone calls, death threats. She was um, p protecting her children. Um, how did you feel when, when your significant other is always away from home? And when they do come home, you have to just really try and get as much time in and, and find some type of balance for that little bit of time that he's home. Because he was in demand. He was everywhere. He was the face of the civil rights movement. So you being the, the, the partner of someone that great... He comes home and he may have a whole lot on him and you got to take it all in. You got to oh. bear it. You got to listen. You got to help him push through those things. You got to help him be, you got to be that support. You got to scratch his head. You got to rub his feet. You also have to be that support and what it was to be that for someone like that. Oh, okay. So you're interested in, in how she, how she care took for him once he went through all of that. And came home. Although some of it that she was obviously there for, but there was a great deal of it she wasn't Absolutely. present for. I mean, that's interesting because when you, as you started to talk about that, I'm going, well, that's not. I, I'm not Martin. I don't carry the weight of the uh, whole Ooh. movement on my shoulders. Thank God. But we've we've got a little bit of parallel in that. That particularly in my early uh, in years ago in my career, I was on the road and you were home with kids, and mm -hmm. and that was always an adjustment for us. Correct. When I come home, I got to fight with people over my my bed and whose turn it is to sleep in my bed next to my wife she, okay uh, okay let's clear that up she's talking about our children <laughs> not any okay, other so people. i travel a lot for work as a consultant and so when i'm gone my bed is is up for grabs sleeping with mommy is up for grabs 
And so when I'm not home, if I'm home, if I happen to be home on a night that wasn't planned or wasn't in the regular rotation, then they want, well, you home on my night, so do you, you know, do I get to still sleep with mommy? No, you get to sleep with mommy. It's my wife. I'm home. I'm getting a chance to sleep with mommy. I'm sleeping with her. Lord, <laughs> get your little butt out of here. So, um, but it's always adjustment. It was always an adjustment for us when I came off the road uh, and, or we switched spots. When I came off the road and I interrupted the flow of what happens at home, that was always an adjustment for us. And it was, had some difficulties, made some difficulties for us. It was an adjustment for the kids. And then I think uh, also was the adjustment when, when we switched. So she has girls night or girls weekend or girls week or whatever. And she goes either with her sister's away or cousin's away or something like that. And I take on the taking kids to swim in baseball, taekwondo, dance, and all that. And I I know that I developed an appreciation for her during those times. And I'm like, I, I ain't built for all this. I can... I, <laughs> so anyway, I was, okay. that was good. It was cool. Thanks. Yeah, that led to a whole lot more. All right. So, um, is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time? And why haven't you done it? Do you need some time? To think you, if you got it, go for it. Okay. I, did you know the questions? I think this I is kind of cheap. Them. No, I, I just, you know I the just questions. I don't know. Them. You know the questions. I don't even know them. Okay, okay go ahead. Yeah, I'm go for it. Okay. I think I should get yes. to pick your Something questions. Something that I've dreamed about doing for a long time is pursuing um my, uh, I would say, acting and being... um Extra dramatic. <laughs> I don't know if I'm asking. Well, that is acting, yes. <laughs> and... and um, being, uh, I, I've actually gone through the beginning process. Um, you got to get headshots. You have to have, yeah. you have to, you have to have that professional. You got to have, have all the tools before you go running into anything because they're not really going to be trying to hear you or even take you seriously if you don't have basic headshots and professional headshots, not selfies. So I've already done that. I just have not put my comp cards together and I've not shot myself. But you're pretty, babe, so go for it. I, I support you. You're a little biased. I am biased, but you still are beautiful. I support you. Go for so it. So that's um, something that I've dreamed about. Though. So uh, what was that question again? All right. Is there something that you dreamed of doing for a long time, and why haven't you done it? Ah, uh, dreamed of doing for a long time. It, I, I have always dreamt it. I've dreamt about a whole lot of stuff. Well, pick one. And I've done pieces of it all, right? Uh, the thing that I think I probably always wanted to do is I, I want to. I don't know if I want to be a professional singer. Well, I did at one point. I did at one point. I, I did a lot of demos and stuff when I was younger because I want to be a professional singer. But I really like to uh, shed. I do have a bit of a fear when it comes to singing outside of ministering, and I'd like to grab a mic and have a. You know, I have this vision of myself. Sometimes <laughs> I do Come on. Um, on a stage as large as uh, like Joyce Myers or what have you. And um, I have a vision of myself. Sometimes it's singing. Um, sometimes it's bringing forth the word, ministering, training or something. So I guess I have done them all. I've done pieces of it. I haven't done it in the size arena. I think that I want to do it in. Okay. Okay. And so, and, and is it why haven't I? Mm -hmm. Um, why haven't I? I'm working on it. I just haven't because I haven't. I, again, I did it. I sang on big arenas when I was younger with groups and different things. And I've done it in high school and colleges when I was in talent shows or anything and stuff like that. But to just, you know, be a part of a bigger, much larger event, I haven't done that yet. And actually, it's one of my goals. So last year, at the end of last year, 2018, no, 19. 2019, I had... um got a chance to meet with some really gigantic speakers, Marcus Buckingham, um, Rachel Hollis, and those guys, and I hung out with them for a couple of days and we talked, um, or at least I listened to them talk a lot about how they moved their careers from um, single lane, I guess you will, or uh, vertical to horizontal. And so I would love, that's my goal this year and 2020 to take my career from being horizontal, I mean, to from vertical uh, to much more horizontally, meaning get on the big stages, 
have in the arena talk about talk about even what we we do on the show you know absolutely these different okay. topics so okay. I have uh, if there's anything that I've wanted to do that I haven't pursued at least a little bit okay so what is your most treasured memory mm. oh my god my most treasured I gotta pick one you can pick two Oh, boy. Even that's difficult, right? Um, I don't know if I have just a treasured... Okay, so I'm going to start. I know I have a couple. Okay. Um, one is the um, the birth of our daughter. Okay. I'll forever have that memory. Um, it was the most painful, the most emotional, <laughs> the most um, beautiful memory I've ever had because you go through this labor, you go through this whole nine month process and, then, and then you give birth to this beautiful being. It's a whole nother person that came from you. And then the um, the very first time you hold uh, your child, it's a beautiful, amazing memory. So that's one. And um, my second one is the day of my wedding. When I started to walk down the aisle, I was so surprised. <laughs> Me too. And elated. <laughs> because as I walked down the aisle, the, my love of my life oh. began to serenade me as I walked down the aisle. And it was, I will never ever forget that because it was the most amazing, beautiful thing in my life. The love of your life was shaking in her <laughs> And uh, petrified, and and I couldn't even keep it together. No. She was so amazingly beautiful, and I looked up. I was trying to sing to her. She's coming down the aisle, and I looked up and I said, "Oh my God, this person is going to commit to being with me for the rest of our lives." How I was just first, she was breathtaking. Oh my God, just incredibly beautiful and then to think about the commitment the magnitude of the commitment and that I had found somebody who thought I was worthy of handing their putting putting herself in in my hands and me and allow me to put myself in her hands um it oh my just God, gonna make me cry <laughs> <laughs> it, it just so I'm glad you picked that moment that was you know but when you talk about it I definitely can Go with some Man. of the feeling behind that. Um, Ooh, that was a great day. Yeah, it was. That was. It was. It was really an amazing day from beginning to end, and it had some crazy, crazy moments in it. But we were in sync. Absolutely, um, we were. So I, we could talk about that. We got to come back and talk about that day oh, yeah. on another another show. But I would veer off and get out of um, what All we're right. doing. Here. Yeah. So am I answering that? The, those Your treasured days? memories. So my treasured memories. You know, those are tough for me because I've been through, and you haven't experienced this yet, thank God. I, and, I, and, you know, everybody will at some point. Um, I lost my mom and uh, my granny. I have, uh, so I've been very blessed. I, my grandparents, all of my grandparents have lived well into their 90s. And, you know, in the Bible, we, we 120 years. We used to be 900 years, but we was messing up so bad. We got 120, that's all God promised us. And so my grandparents have stayed with me until they were 95 years old, and I lost them, three of them, uh, the last year, last two years. And so I don't know that I have a treasured moment, a particular moment, uh, but I know that there were moments with all those four people in the last few years that were just, um, I wouldn't trade them for anything, um, including my aunt, my Aunt Shirley, who was like my other parent. The, the thing that I treasure the most is the night that she, before she left us the next morning um i got i stayed in her hospital room with her and she has these songs that she and i listened to when i was growing up and one of them was let it whip I by the dad's band let it whip but right yeah ah. and so she loved that song and i compiled a, a list of songs her favorite songs that i that i was aware of and i played them in her room with her all night before she passed away and then the same with my mom i sat at my mom's bedside and we talked and she was able to say literally her last two or three things to me. 
and and it was so, my mother was just always in control of herself and in command of whatever and even in her last breath she gave me the last very two <laughs> last things she opened her mouth and said were things that she wanted me to do I had to execute for her and so uh, those two moments in particular and then and, and then if I fast forward my grandmother I'll give you this one um, the morning that she 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 passed away she called me on the phone and I was supposed to pick her up and she said I want you to get lunch for the ladies who have been taking care of me. And so again, I come from a, a line of women who are very demanding and very in control of them, their lives and what they wanted out of life and they didn't take no crap from people. And so those moments um, of having them give me that last demand or command or whatever it is, I cherish those moments. Uh, I have a lot more moments, but those because those have just switched my life so much. They've been so impactful in the last three years or so. I, I have to pick those three. Okay, all right, all right. Ugh, she's killing me here. I, like, it's not fair for me not to know the questions. This is a setup. It's a setup. All right. Share with your partner an embarrassing moment in your life. Bah! <laughs> embarrassing. Okay, you got to go first because I don't think. Okay. So... I used to do. Wait, I was embarrassed, or you was embarrassed. Oh, my my own your own embarrassment. Okay. 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 Why would I? How would I know your embarrassment? I don't know. Embarrassing embarrassing nah, nah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I used to dance with a troupe called Eddie D and Productions. We was doing it. We always did the music festivals and the local things in Rochester. And it was this one festival. We were um, backup dancing for a friend of ours. His name was Henry, and Henry could sing his face off. So. So we have already done, you know, got our routines all together. And for this one day, it was, we were on the stage and it had rained earlier that day. Uh, and the stage itself, they had really tried to clean it up really good. And we have, uh, during our routine, we had to stand on a chair and do this move. <laughs> And then I come back down. Already. Oh my God. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I stand firmly in the middle of the chair. I'm like, I've got this. And as soon as I got up there and I did my move, the chair slid from underneath me. And I fell. And my foot was stuck on the top of the chair. So my body was on the ground. My foot is stuck up on the top of the chair. And I'm like, in front of thousands of people, I was just like, ah. And I was stuck. I was stuck. I couldn't move. <laughs> And 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 Henry, who was singing, he so he was like, "Oh, baby, you all right?" Now he gonna say it in the mic. You all right, baby? Let me help you up. So I was so embarrassed. He had to come and help me up. And then I moved the chair, and we had to just keep on going with the show. But it was so freaking embarrassing. And I was cute that day, honey. I had some hair that was like almost down to my booty. I had this long, luxurious hair, and that was looking all fly, baby. Bye. I was on the flow. So that was a very, very embarrassing <laughs> moment for me. So, <laughs> so it ain't it. that funny. <laughs> Shut up! No, here's the challenge. So you, you're telling the story, and I'm supposed to be thinking of something, but I, I don't know your story, so I want to hear it. And, and so I don't know. I still have it figured out. What my most oh embarrassing. Oh my gosh. I, I'm, I've had, I'm sure I've had a lot of them. I don't. Okay. I, I tell you, and I mentioned this one before. I don't embarrass easily, first of all. I don't care. <laughs> <sighs> but even when I mess up, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. I The thing that does come to my mind is we were talking about in one of the other shows where you had straddled me in the... the <laughs> The truck driver came by. Oh, it was like, I was kind of embarrassed then. But, oh. um, my most embarrassing... Okay. I, I don't know. I have to come back to that one. I, I if I if I can focus or concentrate long enough to think of something, uh, I'll come back to that. I don't know. Wow, ain't that something? <laughs> mm, that is not funny. I'm... I don't like you right now. <laughs> what, what what else is now? All right. She cheats, man. She already knew these questions. I didn't know. I just kind of picked it. Let me something. pick something. Let me say, go ahead. All right. Um, tell your partner something that you like about them. Are no. you want me to go first? Yes. You go first this time. <laughs> you go first this time. 
Okay, so talk to the camera. Tell so me. I like how funny she is. She's funny. And I can't tell you just one thing. So she is funny. She's loving. She's kind. She's gorgeous. She is uh, smart. She is. I and I just have a listen. There isn't anything. Me, you know, eighty twenty rule, right? Um, there's always twenty percent of something you don't like. Uh, but there's so much about my wife that I like. So you know, I know that people are being challenged with this whole quarantine kind of thing. It ain't no challenge for me. I like my wife. I mean, I like her. She's the person I want to talk to all the time. She's the person I want to tell everything to. She's the person that checks me. Um, I respect her. I, I love her. I she's funny. I, okay, it, I could go. It could go on. So okay. that's easy for me. So baby, thank you, thank you. baby, you the you you're my queen to be. Oh my god! You're my everything. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't with her. I swear. <laughs> okay, so I can't. Oh Jesus. Okay, you done, like, ran a whole list down. Hey. Okay, what I like about one of the things, many things that I like about my wife is um, definitely how smart she is. Oh, her intelligence is so sexy. Um, how loving and giving she is. Um, how she is always willing to help someone figure out what their journey or their path is or, or, or just giving some really good, honest sound advice and if she doesn't do anything out of malice everything is to help and to uplift you um i love that about her and the fact that she literally will give you the shirt off of her back and or i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it but it won't fit nobody (laughs) go go on and say it i mean but, Good Lord! And Go she ahead. will. We when and she's very obedient to the spirit and to God, and, and what He's saying to her. When and when um, friends of ours have been struggling financially, um, and we and He has blessed us with an abundance, she doesn't hesitate to give, and she doesn't give stingily. She gives abundantly, and I, I love that about her. I love that her heart is just so big. And so loving. Thank you, honey. Anyways. Ah, oh, boy. Here we All go. Right. Here we go. Here um, we go. Okay. So let's see. Let's one see. Another one. Um. Oh wait. How close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's? Are y'all watching? I ain't saying nothing. My family watch this show. Oh my god! My so. family is the bomb. Uh, we now don't get it twisted. We got a whole lot of strong personalities, and I was raised by yes, Lord, a lot of women. Um, has nothing to do with my attraction to women, but it does have to do with my caretaking of women because I, when I was traveling and when I'm traveling. Um, and when purses, designer purses were in and I was traveling, no matter where I was, I would buy my mom, my aunts, my cousins or whatever purses and stuff because feminine women are into that thing. It wasn't my thing, but I knew they liked it. So I would do that. I would do anything in the world for my family. My family is the bomb. We fight like, woo, 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 woo. matter of fact, we get on a Friday night call during this quarantine and I almost fight every week with one of my cousins about something. They but, don't fight. They debate. No, we fight. It's okay. It don't matter. We still love each other. Because at the end of the day, it don't matter what you talking about, what you doing. Those are my cousins. They're really more like my sisters. Um, but my family, I love my family. Oh, I, I can't. I, I I love my family. And, okay. and, and, and we, we did a lot of good stuff. And I have I grew up in a blended family. So I've got some, some siblings and, and uh, older siblings and some younger siblings. And my parents were really good about making sure we could see things outside of our community. We were growing up, we grew up in a predominantly African American neighborhood. It was middle class, a middle class city. I really now Gary, Indiana, I grew up in Gary, Indiana. A lot of people from the outside don't have the right perspective of Gary. Gary was very much an affluent African American community, very middle class, um, solidly middle class. And although in most households, uh, you might, or in certainly in our neighborhoods, we had, um, 
uh, skilled craftsmen. We had police officers. It was just an eclectic uh, array of professionally professional people educated on all levels. I always describe our city as the Black Mayberry. Um, <laughs> and it was, right? And so there are black celebrities who go to Chicago and they come here and Gary. But anyway, it wasn't just my family. My family is not just the people I grew up in the house with. It is the city. This city produced a lot of people. And in Gary, you'll find out you're the cousin of somebody, the cousin of somebody. And it's not that you're related by blood. It's just because our family extension is so big. And I love my family. I love the city I grew up in. I love the people here. And my nucleus family, they the bomb.com. So, um, yeah, I had an amazing childhood, an amazing um, youth in Gary, Indiana, and with my family. Okay. One more plug for my grandmother. Uh, so my my extended family, my grandmothers and my grandparents, people in the South, they're the bomb too. We saw them all the time. We just had these big, big family reunions and stuff all the time. And so, yeah, I, I had a really great child. I mean, you got some trauma in there because things happen, right? Mm-hmm. Adults get divorced and all that kind of stuff. But that's their drama. And in terms of my childhood, it was great. Well, I agree. I am in agreement with you. My childhood was very um, <clears throat> fun. Um, I did come also from a blended family, uh, a, a, div- a child of a divorce. Um, so I ended up having two nucleuses of families. And um, whether I was with my father and then what I loved is the fact that we went on family trips to places I had never been. And, and one of the places I remember us going to a lot was uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, trying to they were always trying to get us outside of our box and do different things and then so a little different on my mom's side what I I had um on my dad's side I had a whole bunch of uncles and aunts of course but uh, my uncle all of them uncles were on this side I'm with my dad I had so many and then um what I love was we a uh, great memory is every I'm going to say every about four or five years we'd have family pictures and we all go to um grandma Davis house and we'd have a professional photographer, and each family would have a family picture. Then all the uncles and, and the aunts would have their family picture, group picture. And then all the nieces and nephews and cousins, we'd have our group pictures. And then you, when you go to Grandma Davis' house, it was always up on the wall. So you knew who, you know, it was It was you just a really great them. connection, and that's how it kept us connected. And I used to love, I love that, and that's a really great memory. But also on my mom's side, I have all aunts. All aunts. <laughs> Six or seven aunts. And what I love about it is that all of them are are great role models, strong women. Some of them married, some of them divorced, some of their husbands passed away, some of them But they all have all stayed really strong, so great role models. But one of my favorite things about um, uh, growing up um, with my mom's side or my aunts was we would do some fun activities. My most favorite one was my Aunt Tep. Ooh, my Aunt Tep used to have... um, uh, we would have, she would get a whole bunch of tents and we would be... I was around for some of this. <laughs> and she would have all of us have different tents and we'd be up all night and we'd um, she'd, uh, we'd eat dinner together and we'd have a big bonfire. We had s'mores and we'd stay the night. We'd have music. We'd be dancing, having a good time. And then, ne- and then the next morning, my aunt Tep, she could cook first of all. Who wanted to do it? And the chocolate she, cake. She, the chocolate cake is the bomb. Oh my gosh! I, there's so much more to she. I know that, but, but she makes that for me. So. Anyway, <laughs> but she would actually have almost um this, this big um big pot, and she would make had this thing. She would stir the grits early in the morning over the fire. We all had grits and and bacon and sausage and all of that and stuff for breakfast, and and we'd have a good time that morning. Oh my goodness. Really, really great, great memories with me and all my... And it wasn't just our cousins. It was like our cousins, our friends, the, the kids down the street, and their kids. And it was just like everybody would bring their own tents, and then my aunt would have tents. It was just so much fun. We played games. It was just really, really great memories. So my family was the bomb.com on both sides. So here's the great thing about that. Um, she's she. I got to experience some of the stuff she's talking about with her family. And, and when I was in college, too... Because I would talk about the games and stuff my family plays together. We have this game that we play. We've been playing for generations called Tripoli. Oh, we, my God! <laughs> with a bunch of pennies in. So we bring people home when we was in college. We bring our friends home. And folks would say, y'all kind of just like the Cosby's. Oh, my God. Kind of we were kind of like that. But the great thing is her family does the stuff they did. My family did the stuff we did. And since we've been together and married, 
obviously we have kids. These families have gotten the opportunities to be together and they have continued um, to jail and to mesh like this, even though when we first got together, everybody wasn't so crazy about the idea of us getting together. The, after we did it, though, and they always liked each other. They just didn't want us to get married. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, since we have been married, they all have been supportive. We've had tons of events and things happen. Some, you know, unfortunately we get together and we have to deal with death and those things. But when somebody in my family passes away, her family comes. Mm -hmm. And when somebody in her family passes away, my family goes. And we take care of each other. So we've taken these families and blended them. So we continue to have really good... Um, really good relationships with our family. And, and that's another thing I think that helps us in our marriage. Uh, we, because, you know, despite the fact, like I said, nobody, nobody wants their kids to go through what they perceive to be a terrible time. If they're same sex, our families got over that stuff and they really have come into being and supporting us and helping us, you know, and, 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 and lending themselves to each other as support. So my family members call hers, our family members call my family and they check on each other and they got relationships that go beyond us is the point. And so Absolutely. I think that's awesome. Let's All get right. let's get two more questions in. Actually I think that was it. So uh -uh. No, no. So what? Here Rashida thinks she's slick. She cheated. She printed these questions off. I you know, normally we know the questions that you guys are gonna ask us but we don't show each other our answers. She so I knew she was asking questions for us, but she cheated because she got a little note on I here. I did not cheat. She, she got, it's, she it's got called preparation <laughs> for the show. <laughs> she cheated. I didn't get a chance to prepare for the show. That ain't my fault. <laughs> That's called cheating. So anyway, so how you stay married? Your wife cheated every night. Well, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's cheat on the page. I was like, you better clear that <laughs> up she right now. <laughs> But it does keep it interesting, don't it? So, anyway, um, if you think that's cheating because I didn't know the questions, put some comments below. Let's find out what... You... If you think it's cheating, come on and comment. If you don't think it's cheating... Come on and comment. Come on and comment anyway. <laughs> it's just called I was prepared and she wasn't. Because she didn't tell me the questions. Yes, I... Okay. Cheating. Then... Cheating, cheating. It, whatever. Anyway, anyway. So, uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of, I don't know what this is, they call it the confessional or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just wonderful, intimate questions. Intimate questions. Intimate questions with Lisa and Rashida. <laughs> There's no telling what we're going to say, what we're going to talk about. You never know. Anyway, thank you again for joining us. Join us next time. Be, be sure to subscribe. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We also join us for Let's Talk. Let's Talk has been pretty freaking lively Ooh. the last few weeks on Wednesday nights at 7, 7 p.m. Yeah, I, I want y'all to go back a few episodes. When okay, was, she was we right. We were bantering about whether it was 5 or 7. 7 p.m. She was right. On Wednesday nights. 7 p.m. Say it again. Say it again. She say, was say right. Say it again. I said it once like three times. That's enough. <laughs> Yes, she was absolutely correct. It's 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Just basically, just hop on with us on Facebook. We also have a Zoom link. But um, just definitely try and jump in there. We just have some really, really fun conversation. We, All right? Oh, but wait. We got a toy. I think we're going to do a toy episode. We heard about some new toys and some new things. You know, <clears throat> I've been married a long time. I, I haven't had the need to go out and, you know, try things. But I hear the markets shifted a lot. So, we're going to go and check out some of this stuff. Now, if you were on those Let's Talk shows, you would have found out two weeks ago that there's some really interesting toys out there. So, I think we're going to try to get we're gonna try to try get some of those, right? And bring them on. Ooh. Or a toy expert, somebody to come yeah, on. Yeah, we got to get a toy expert. Yeah, somebody yeah. come on and talk to us about this stuff. So, make sure you tune in. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe so you'll know the next time we drop a new episode. Thank you again for joining us, and you have a great day. Peace. <laughs>